Hello everybody, this is James DeBow on Discovering Season 5, dedicated to original people, and we got a special guest on today, Yudoyan Akpan. Nice How are you doing? Here. Nice to be here. Great to have you on anyway, you know. Thank you. Thank you. We've got a lot to discuss today, yeah. you know, we're going to go over your timeline. And also, you're on a break at the moment, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. you're just resting up off anyway. Off season now, off season. Off season now, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. All right then, let's go from the beginning then. We, okay. You're a professional footballer, yeah. playing for Cyprus at the moment. Yeah, yeah, playing in Cyprus. Playing in, in, in Cyprus. In Cyprus, yeah. yeah. And also Italy, you played I've for played before? I've played in Italy, I've played in England and Cyprus so and, far. Okay, okay. So okay. where did it all begin anyway? I like to know everyone um, at the beginning. Okay. Uh, when did you get into football? Was you a young yeah. lad, yeah. young kid? I wasn't really into football, to be fair. Um, up until I was like six, seven, and I used to play with my cousin, and he was much younger than me, so I, I got a bit jealous that he was better than me, so um, I got into it just to get better than him, and I found out I was decent, to be fair. So I started playing Sunday League, things like that. Um, had interest from Liverpool, Everton, Tramia. I went, there was a week where I went into all three clubs, and Liverpool and Everton said, Okay, finish your six week trial, blah blah blah. Went into Tramia for two days. Next day I had the contract. Wow. Straight away. How old was you then? Um I just just finished primary school, was going into year seven, so about around eleven, ten. Around eleven. So from that point Yeah. You were spotted already. Spotted. And I, I wasn't really Wow into football. I just played for a bit of fun. You just had better. the natural yeah, gift. It was natural, I think. That's excellent. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So um so down the line now, um, when you decided, you know, you started taking it more serious yeah. because it's it's not just about, yeah, yeah, football. It's a, it's what you got doing from A to Z, how you got yeah. there, yeah, yeah, yeah. all the training. Yeah. How hard is the training? Like, I'd say the trip, because I'm naturally, I think I'm naturally athletic. Naturally as, athletic, yeah. As you can see, my family are. My yeah. sister's a bodybuilder, my brother's a runner, you know, stuff like that. So I think the natural fitness will help me a lot. The only thing that probably would have swayed a little bit, but it never, because I've got a disciplined African mother, was the the the, the mentality and the discipline. When discipline, my boys, yeah. when my boys were out after the street lights went went off, yeah, I had to be inside stuff yeah. like that kept me in, kept me in, like under control. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, this this is this comes down to you know, as an African, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. like um, Sierra Leone yeah, and yeah. Um, half Nigerian yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think that Africans always put more values on education on you know just anything it's of course. sometimes in this being born here and you, you mix with certain peoples yeah. it can you know side trackers onto like this is this is important or this yeah. is important yeah but like you you have to stay focused, focused otherwise you wouldn't uh gone as far as you want yeah. was no so in cyprus yeah. nice hot country as well yeah, yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what's yeah. it like being there um like permanently to be fair, and like, this time round it was a bit easier because missus of eight years is living with me so okay it was um the things like cooking and stuff she done it for me i was i was a bit chilled whereas the times when i went to italy and things i was living alone i was kind of isolated you know how italy is it's a bit um it's not very multicultural so mm. seeing uh foreign is a bit strange you know sometimes especially in the places i was living so um yeah this time around cyprus is i think it's easy there's a uh, i lived in a predominantly british area so it was a bit more easier for me this time around Ayanapa, Cyprus. It's just around Ayanapa. It's a place called Protoras. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. 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 Lovely place, Cyprus. Not too, oh, unbelievable. So Italy was more isolated there. Yeah, I think... I think uh, that keep you disciplined, would you say? A lot, a lot. Because all I was thinking about mm. when I was going home was the next day in training. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Whereas okay. In Cyprus, I was thinking, oh, okay, tonight we'll go for a little meal or we'll go and watch the 40 or whatever. Yeah. You know, so. so what was um, Tramia Rovers going back to going back. when you played the Tramia Rovers? Okay, so... I told you I've just signed. I've signed the contract like two after two training sessions. After two training sessions. Um, to be fair, as a whirlwind, I went from being number one to to getting released like what six seven years later. But um, what? So I, I I got the contract as soon as I went. Uh, two years of playing, I was I, I felt myself improving because when I was much younger, I was raw. I had natural talent, but I was raw. I didn't know really what I was doing. I just run in straight lines and shoot the ball. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. As you are, as you do when you're younger. So I improved. I felt myself improving. Um, I was always playing two to three age groups higher. Oh. Every 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 that season. Yeah, that's a every lot season. So at the age of thirteen, fourteen, um, 
Tramia come in now and offered me my scholarship, which they're not meant to do. Like, you're meant to get the scholarship when you're 16. So I got it two, three years early. What? Compared to everybody. So Advanced. I think I think that, that, that sort of thing is what swayed my focus away from education. And probably my mum too, she was like, okay, he, he's already got his place in college, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Because I had the scholarship. So it was a good thing, but it could have been a curse at the same time because if I didn't have the mum I did, I probably wouldn't have stayed as focused as yeah. I did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I wasn't in school a lot because there was a thing called day release. So that that's when um, you train during the day. Yeah. And you miss school and you do your homework. Okay. In training, you know, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I got, I got, I got, ve- I done very well at Tramia. Got to nine, 18 there. Getting told I'm going to be the next big player there blah 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 but I think what what really what really swayed for me was my mentality was not correct I think because I got so, everything so early I got a bit lethargic you know yeah so, yeah but you find you, as you're getting a little older now you're yeah. kind of finding your way more of course of course yeah well that's just part of life yeah, yeah. you know in itself you're only young and yeah. you know most 18 year olds uh, yeah that's how they're gonna be. Of I, course, I, I'd course. see you. Of course. So um, moving on now. Um, so, have you changed positions? Of what's your position no, from? Uh, um, so when I was at Tramia, I was playing. I was playing as, as a striker. As a striker. All my life, I played as a striker. Okay. But as I've gotten older, I've um, I've, I've realized that it's a lot easier for me because I'm very fast. I'm very direct. Sometimes to play on the wing. So what a lot of managers have been doing recently is play me sometimes on the wing, sometimes up front. So I, I vary between the positions and I feel like comfortable in any, to be fair. Yeah. You've got to be in the modern game. Like if you see Liverpool, Sadio Mane plays on the wing, up front. You have to change about. It's just normal now, I think, in the game. Who were the footballers who really inspired you yeah. growing up okay. where you thought, you know... The reason, you, the reason yeah. why I started playing football genuinely was a player called DJ Drogba from Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast? Yeah. Okay. Legend. Mm. Um, everything about him, how he celebrated, how he scored, the strength, everything that he done, I could I could resonate with because he was a, he was a um, similar build, similar, um, he had the hunger, especially from the area I'm from. Yeah. When you're from Toxtiv, all you do is play because you want to get your mum or your family out of the area to to progress your lifestyle that's you know what right I'm yeah so yeah I, I had the same hunger as him yeah after i knew that you could make football money from football like the the type of money that people make now <laughs> made me give me the fire in my stomach you know and also you know um one thing as well is like i mean it's, what would you say is the average lifespan i mean not lifespan the football span yeah, of yeah, yeah. Um, a football what's your average uh, retirement it's age ch- it's changing now as the, as the years are going on it's going crazy um like you see ronaldo and ibrahimovic they still play football they're like 36 37 years of, of age you know what i'm saying so okay so change a bit it's changed you say, yeah. a bit back in the day pff, 32 year old it's done now wow, what? now it's going to 40s Okay. The, I, I support Chelsea and the centre back is around 37, 38. Fitness getting better though, it's something better. then. Sports, yeah. science, everything. It's oh, changed. Oh, okay. It's That's changed. why. A lot of things have changed. But before, it wasn't so long. It wasn't so long at all. Because it's interesting when you think of a career. And if someone's an actor, an yeah. actor could be someone up to 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the woman from Black Panther. Yeah. Exactly. Black Panther, yeah. The, the amazing. woman, the old woman, she she got the the role at the age of like ninety two. Imagine yeah. it. So, <clears throat> so with football, like, cause it's like a shorter career yeah. than most other things, and that it's like you've got to be kind of smart as well, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. To yeah. think ahead, well, ahead, yeah. you know, this is how long I'm gonna last for, yeah, 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 yeah. and then what you do after that. Yeah. Sometimes, you know. Yeah. So it's I'm sure it's about pre planning and everything, yeah. isn't it? Hundred percent. Um. Also, with the scholarship side. You did a scholarship, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Now, would you say you were saying about before that it's more, it's not taken as serious. Yeah, yeah. It's more concentrated on the football. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. I'd, I'd say when you when you get the scholarship, you know your main objective is to try and get your professional contract. But uh, you have these choosers that come in and they, they'll half teach you because they know they can they can boost your marks up them, themselves. Do you know what I mean? It's not, yeah. it's not taken as serious as it should be. It's up to you if you want to take it serious or not. You know what I'm saying. So, the educational part of the scholarship is 
it's a blight. Like, you know, like uh, a lot of lads didn't really concentrate to finish the work. Like I, I got released and I still had to finish my work for my college okay because i wasn't <laughs> concentrating at all on it yeah and i thought i was nailed on to to get an extended contract you know what i'm saying so these things happen but at the end of it you come out with your level one coaching you know what i'm saying so oh, if good, i want good. to wanted to stop football now i want to start, start coaching i could i could potentially do it you know what i'm saying so Excellent. it's a good thing it's a good thing long term what would you say was the hardest part about making it as a professional footballer now for you and maybe it just seemed easy no no it's crazy for me but it but how would you explain that it's like crazy. that journey yeah I, i've been through so the past but 2019 i come back from italy um i had I had to get surgery on my groin um mm. this was halfway through the season i wanted to do my physio back home because i didn't really get on with the physio in italy so i done my my, my um, recovery here and the team paid me out. So they paid me out. I stayed home. Oh, done, done my recovery um, until the summer. Um, I left that team. They wanted me back, but I left that team. I wanted to stay at home. Um, so I went on trial in conference, a conference team. Played one preseason game for them. I was nailed on to, to sign and stuff. Played one preseason for them. Preseason game for them. Snapped my ACL. This was in 2020 now. Is that someone fouling you? No, do you know what? I was Tackling. running. I think, I think, because I was injured and I was so hungry to come back, mm. I think I over, I overworked myself, and I think my legs were a bit fatigued. That that this, on that day, mm. and I was overthinking stuff because I was thinking oh, I'm about to sign a contract with this team. Everything was going on. Pressure. Everything was going on that day, and um, I was running. I just remember myself running, and the lads pulled me back, and my legs literally bent, and went back straight. Oh. Whoa. So and then I was thinking, ah, it's nothing. That I've, stuff like this happened before. You have a, you get a lot of injuries, would you say? Oh yeah, yeah, you get a lot of injuries, but the small injuries. Small injuries. But yeah. when you've had no contact and then you feel a bit of pain, you think, ah, oh, it's nothing because you used to getting kicked and whatever else. And I've got home, and my knees just phew, went like a balloon. Wow. And I knew after that, I knew. So I've I've come back from an ACL, but because of the 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 perk I've I've had off being a professional for Tramia is you get a PFA card and both of my surgeries I got to do them private because mm. I got insurance of playing professionally for Tramia. Oh excellent. So yeah. every player that's played in the professional league they get this card and you can use it for whatever you want. If you're addicted to gambling, if you're if you're oh, trying okay, to look okay. for work, stuff like that, they pay. Yeah. You've so, got it you've got a budget mm. where they pay. So I I've I've been lucky in that term um that I've had the privilege to go private and things uh, fast make the the process faster you know what i'm saying so that was a good thing and then i, I literally pff, two days after the the surgery two three days after the surgery you could you could ask my mom i was crying i wanted, oh, to, I wanted to quit but I, as i say to my missus i don't think anybody in my position would still be playing football what what I've been through the past okay, yeah, three yeah. four years they would not they would have give they would have gave up because I was injured twice and in, so I've missed two seasons basically I've missed two seasons and I've recovered and I've come back and now I'm playing professional football in Cyprus do you know what I'm saying wow and a lot of people in that t in that <laughs> term especially around COVID times they would have give up oh yeah With all the, the places I, I remember trying to train. And I was trying to train on the Astros with my personal trainer and they wouldn't let us on because COVID, you know what I'm saying? So we we had to find a, a spot of grass to do my recovery. Um, so pff, a lot of people would have given up. Interesting when you mentioned about COVID as well. I mean, like how hard was that? Like, I mean, that the change all of a sudden. Yeah. Crazy. Was everything more just pressure? It was crazy. Yeah. yeah. Much, much more pressure because I was trying to do <coughs> things that I needed to do in the gym. Mm. places like that I couldn't I couldn't use them couldn't get in um, a lot of teams didn't know what they was doing the next season so I was thinking a lot of things I was thinking where I'm going to try and go they're not going to even be because I, how I thought COVID was going to be it was going to be forever and a lot of lower lower teams were going to lose their budgets and they were going to have to fold and stuff like that so I was thinking pff, I could p potentially not play football again you know what I mean yeah 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 well so a lot of things are going through my head yeah well at the end of the day a lot of you got to be mentally strong of also course, and physically strong yeah um also funny enough we met about um support before yeah 
and gambling. Yeah. Because I hear this a lot with uh, yeah. do a lot of footballers have gambling problems. Yeah. And I mean, it can be that bad way, like you said, they can get support and yeah. help from this and that. Hundred percent. Yeah. Wow. So, and they're more so like just like the lifestyle. The lifestyle for sure. There's, you know, I've seen a lot of things. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. In football, especially because, especially in England, you go to train nine o'clock in the morning. You finish twelve, around twelve, like one one o'clock. If you want to do your extras, you do your extras. Two o'clock, you finished. So somebody that's earning what around four hundred a k to four k, especially in the lower leagues anyway, a k to four k in, in a week, with how many hours in the day left? Oh, of course. What are you gonna do? You know what I mean? You're of gonna course. try and find something, especially if your missus works, your kids in nursery, whatever else. Yeah. You've got time to blow with your with your mates after. You know what I mean? Especially when you finish half day. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I I understand it, but I've never been in the situation where I've done any of that because, as I say. I go back to my roots every time. I still, I still imagine my mum shouting at me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's that's how it actually is. All my life, I've been disciplined and I've been on the right path because my mum. Like I, I live, you know where I live. I live middle of Kingsley Road, and nobody, like, and nobody that I grew up with is doing the correct things. You know what I mean? And I, I say to myself, how come I'm not doing that? But it's because it's it's I've been how I've been brought up. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, once the best years exactly, uh, and it's that's so important because it can easily you can easily get sidetracked by 100%. you know because there's not a there's not a whole lot of opportunities out there no. anyway. Put it that way. So you know, 100%. just to be able to um, go in the direction of have a career as a footballer yeah. or anything like that, so that's an accomplishment. Yeah. And you, you've stuck at it, which yeah. is important. Yeah. Now, um, your roots is uh, Sierra Leone and Nigerian. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, I know you've been to Sierra Leone. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, tell us a little bit about Sierra Leone. Um, first time when I went, I was a, a little trooper, man. Um, I went, and when I went, it was, I don't know what, if it was that far after the Civil War, but what I remember was seeing a lot of amputees, but, like, they were still happy because... They were still alive, do you know what I'm saying? Uh, our family had a big complex compound with two gate men, you know, how this, how this, how it Living is. Living good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the front garden, there was a salu- hair saloon. Yeah. Um, and it was, just, it was just vibes every day, like wake up at six and people are, are doing what they want to do, like selling cold water on the head, stuff like that is just stuff that you'll never forget, like. I need to go back soon. Do you know? What I mean? Do you know what I mean? It's the same because you know where you have the city life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's the village life. Yeah, 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 is yeah, yeah. what would you? Is it more city I'd, or I'd village? I'd class this just as like just the outside of the city. I'd outside say, of the I'd cities, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But like where the houses are, so like it's like living on the outskirts of the town, nicest you know parts. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, nicest yeah. parts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're close enough to go to where you need to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was nice. It was a nice experience. I just the 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 main thing that I remember is getting chased by um a goat <laughs> that's okay. the only thing i was a little kid so i yeah, just yeah. remember getting chased by a goat and it was it was it was a good experience I, I would love to go back very soon but the best time to go to africa is in december for christmas well you know i've been mean? gambia in december it's, and that was amazing it's the best thing wow. it's the best thing they celebrate christmas differently don't they totally different totally yeah. differently so i'd love to but with, with football <laughs> It's difficult to get out in December. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. So I, I, I've got. I love to try that place yeah. anyway, Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone. You know, because yeah, I like uh, the your style of cooking as well. Everything. Yeah. I think Sierra Leone, and um, that's probably one of the top ones. Yeah, yeah. Top food in that in Africa. Yeah, also yeah, yeah. Nigeria, Nigeria. Probably of after course, that, of you know what I mean? Yeah, of course, of course. But um, yeah. Your mum's an amazing cook, she anyway. Is, she is. <laughs> so I've had many birthdays. That's why I'm a big boy, man. That's why I'm a big boy. Yeah, yeah. So when I when I'm out there, I struggle to be fair because. I'm so used to my mum's cooking that when I go away, I feel like my body just like deflates a little bit, to be honest. But yeah. I've tried to find my way around it. Can you cook yourself? I can cook, I can cook. But the problem is, is getting the the ingredients that you need over there. So what you'd be better doing is taking ingredients. a bunch of ingredients yeah, yeah, out there. Yeah. Most definitely, you know. Yes, so also, have you been to Nigeria before? No. But I'd love to go to Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, I need 100%. to get there myself. You know, yeah. like I think, I think amazing. it's a uh, one of them places where if if the people really did come together, because I've got I had a friend, my my friend in my team is Nigerian. He's a proper Nigerian boy. He was telling me a lot of things about 
how the government works, about um, how people are, are jealous of each other. And he was basically saying, if the people in Nigeria wasn't jealous of each other and they come together, powerful. that place would be the most powerful place in the world. Most definitely. But yeah. what he was telling me is the president, the yeah, the president of Nigeria, he's he's being controlled by a higher power from That's a different right. country. Definitely. And definitely. He, and he acts like he's he's um, he doesn't know anything about what's going on in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. But he's obviously taken the money corruption. From some, bribes you know, there's and a all lot that. of corruption. Yeah. And that's the, that's what that's the downfall of Nigeria. It as, is. But as you see, places like Ghana, I know it's much smaller than Nigeria. They they're on they're elevating right now because all their people they've come together. They've, all together. they've realized they've realized if we come together now, we can make this place a different like um, a different type of. Africa for everyone else to see, do you know what I mean? Whereas in Nigeria they don't have that. They don't. It's a real shame that. that though. It's a shame, yeah. You know, if they did pull together, you know, yeah. where the part where my tribe from EJ or tribe Delta yeah, yeah. State, the amount of oil that is <laughs> down there, you exactly. know, how can you? But it's corruption. Corruption, a lot of corruption. You know, and it's, and and, and the, the main thing for me is just jealousy. It's, yeah, is jealousy and not wanting the other person to win. A large population, well, biggest population. Yeah. Is Nigeria, yeah, isn't yeah, it? You yeah. know, in Africa. So, yeah. I mean, it's a shame. I mean, I hope to see, like, I've, I mean, hopefully things change in the yeah, future. 100%. You know, I mean, I try to think positive. Yeah. Because, I mean, we always, one thing we hear about Africa on the media, the yeah. news, we all hear about negativity. negativity it's yeah. all poor. Yeah, the only had slavery, no yeah. civilizations and yeah. that. Well, that's the whole point why I do this show, yeah, to sure. speak on the positive black excellence. For and sure. Dealing with civilizations, I mean, West Africa, all Africa had yeah, civilizations yeah. predating Europe, mm. even Asia, yeah. and also brought civilizations into their places. Yeah. So now it's unfortunately since the transatlantic slave trade, there's been like a dominance, yeah. you know, where it's superiority, where they can write our history. Yeah, I agree. But we need to research. This is why it's so important to research ourselves. Ourselves, exactly. And this is why I always ask everyone on the show the importance of African history. Yeah. Everyone who comes on, musician, sports, yeah. you know, anything what you do. Yeah. What would you think of the re a good reason to see, like, well, it's very important to know our history? Okay. Uh, I For me, our history is very important to me. Yeah. Just basically because my mum, my mum, my family, my nan, they've made me be a part. Like, I feel African. When yeah. people, when I go to different countries, to my fo for football and stuff, and they ask me where I'm, where I'm from. I'll say straight away, my mum from Sierra Leone, my dad from Nigeria. Yeah, proudly. Proudly. Yes. Where there's a, there's a lot of black people that that will say, ah, I'm French. Yeah. I'm English. You yeah. know what I mean? And I, I played, I played with a couple of people that uh, that do that, like they're mm. embarrassed to be from Africa. Whereas I take pride in being from Africa because, for me, a lot of things that we do is an influence to the world globally. Our skin color, our hair, our style, our dance, our, our physical attributes is mm. a big influence to everybody. Massive. So I'm proud. I'm very proud to be African because I think that's where that's where life started. The original peoples. Hundred percent. Definitely. And I, that's why I think, for me, it's powerful to say I'm African. So. Yeah. And if the world understood, yeah, humanity beginning in Africa, yeah. And the greatness of Africa, right. there would be less racism on the planet. Yeah. But unfortunately, if parents, you know, if they're not educated to give sure. their children knowledge, yeah. then yeah. who's going to give them it? You exactly. know what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. We can't rely on the schools no. to tell the truth. They're no. just like rewriting history all the time. For sure. For sure. You know, but definitely, I'm really appreciate yeah, the recognize the importance because sure. all we see is the negativity. Negativity. We see. You know. These, the, the, on the TV, the flies on the kids' heads. Yeah, no, yeah. No food. But a lot of people in Africa live better lives than people in Europe. 100%. I promise you. And the only reason that a lot of Africans come to Europe is because the overpopulation in Africa, because they need to get away to make a little bit of money to yeah. take back home. To take back. But the problem is they get stuck. Yeah, because they, that's because right. Because that. England's a trap. England, a trap. Europe is a trap. I totally agree with so that. So yeah, yeah. you come here, and then you get these bills. You get you owe this money, you owe that money, and then by the time you know it, you can't get back home. And then, so the the smartest people 
and the richest people, the richest African people live in Africa. They don't live anywhere else, and that's where a lot of people go wrong. They think the richest people, richest African people, they live in America, they live in England. They don't. Yeah. They take them that money, and they can build a house triple the size of the house they can buy in England, in Nigeria. See, and they own land for that they'll never be able to land. They'll, they'll never be able to own here. And the funny thing is about that. There's People need to know that yeah. because some of our people are afraid, afraid, even just to travel to Africa. Exactly. I'll go to this place before I go to Africa, mm-hmm. where Africa, I mean, you've got to go, you've got to mix with the local people, yeah. learn about them and that. Yeah. And it's the thing of what you just said, feeling yeah. as an African. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the feeling, no one I'm feeling because yeah. me, I feel like an African yeah, from course. a child. Of course. That's, I have an African mind. Yeah, I might not be born there, yeah. but it's installed coming from my grandfather. Me too, me too, me you know too, what I mean? And I'm, sure. I will never let that go. Yeah, yeah. Same, I have the children. I'm passing that knowledge for down. Sure, for sure. Because I know how powerful it is. Sure, yeah. And it is about the f- feeling like an African. For sure. 100%. Where th- this is the. This is the way you extract the passion yeah. when you feel. Yeah. Because your mind, I mean, you, you can try, well, yeah, I know I'm originally from Africa because on my Trinidad side, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that we went through the transatlantic course, slave trade. But at the same time, I was always deep and wanted to re- acquire knowledge. Yeah, so on yeah. my me, me mum's side, yeah. we, um, <clears throat> my mum done a DNA ancestry. Yeah. And uh, the majority of African that came up my mum was Nigerian. Yeah. And I was like, wow. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, that was like something an eye opener for my mother. Exactly, <laughs> because she never exactly. knew. And that's why I've never you know? understood the back in the day the little Caribbean African beef. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Because we're all from the same place. Well, it's like uh, well it's well, it's America, yeah, the yeah. Caribbean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people got a story of oh your people sold you into slavery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's big misconceptions. Yeah, yeah, there's at the same time, corruption or people who can be corrupted yeah. has been going from the beginning of time. Yeah, for sure, yeah. It's individuals. It's yeah. not down to, you can't blame a whole country because there was some corrupt people yeah. who got put into power by the European yeah. or anyone else, you know. So, sure, sure, sure. so anyway, you like to travel also, don't you? Okay, We're talking yeah, yeah. a little bit about traveling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, 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 I, I do, I, I'm lucky, I'm lucky because I can travel and play football at the same time, do you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So, I've I've unlocked something that a lot of lads from Liverpool are scared to do, especially from, from the North West. Yeah. Because I've, I've only seen a lot of Londoners go, go abroad when I've went abroad. But a lot of lads around here are comfortable because they're in the mindset of, oh, let me work a, a part-time job, I'll play non-league, and um, I'll make enough money to be able to buy this car and be able to take my missus out, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Whereas, I, I come out my comfort zone and it's benefited me now. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, saying? of course. And I, I come out of that comfort zone not knowing what was going to happen, but now it's worked in my favour. So travelling is part of my job now, so I, I'm, I'm going to love that forever. Amazing. Like, and from, from Cyprus, I never know next year I could be in Turkey, year after I could be in Saudi Arabia. And that's how things work when and you, you just, go abroad. You, you know just I mean? flow with it. Exactly. Flow with it, isn't but it? Whereas as you, if you stay here, you're only going to stay here. Especially yeah. when you play lower leagues. But a lot of lads don't understand that. And what I was saying to my, my friend the other day is, at the end of every month, I probably take the same amount of money as someone in League 2 because I don't pay for bills. I don't have to pay for my house. Yeah. I get a free car off the club That's and I take my wages, do you know what I mean? So mm. a, lot, a lot of lads don't understand that. So they'll stay here and say, ah, oh, let me wear this flashy clothes. Let me wear these flashy clothes so everyone thinks like I'm a footballer. But... Really and truly, you're a part-time footballer. Yeah. Playing and working. So, and you're trying to show off about things that... Yeah. It's not there, fully there yet, you know what I mean? So, yeah. I'd rather be away, not think about materials as everyone That's does. right, yeah, yeah. Everyone yeah. does in England, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not materialistic when you go abroad. I can Excellent, go out that, yeah, in my yeah. flip-flops. Because <laughs> you want to just be yourself sometimes. Exactly. It's not exactly. about, like, um, being noticed Proving every things, yeah. every minute by someone getting 100%. an autograph or something, 100%. you know. You want peace, relax, and I just, want just peace. be with your, peop- your peoples and exactly. normal I play life. I play football for fun. I don't, I don't, it's not one of them where I'm trying to be someone I'm not. I'm, I do because I actually love the sport and I love. Yeah. As, as I started, I started just to get better than my cousin. Yeah. And now I'm carrying on to get better than myself last year. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I'm not playing to 
for the reason why everyone else does and that's probably what keeps my head see you're very humble as well yeah i am that, that that's course, great you from know. my mom you know what i mean yeah I've yeah been raised to be humble yeah from, from day one i'm not better than no one i'm nobody you know what i mean i'm nobody i'm just you a lad i'm so a lad that's trying to i don't want a job so i'm doing something that i enjoy yeah yeah getting paid by it. i'm no I don't. When people say professional and football, and I just say I'm, I kick, I kick football. I play football. Yeah. I enjoy football. Do you know what I mean? Like it's nothing. I'm not trying to. I haven't got no ego about football or whatever. Because at the end of the day, footballers are all humans. You know what I mean? That's it. Yeah. All human beings. And if you if you keep that mindset, you can go as far as you want in the in the sport. Most definitely. When you get when you get lost in your head, get that's when things see. start to change. Well, some of them have like to go arrogant or yeah, have a big ego exactly. or whatever like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. when things start to change. You know what I mean? So. But then what happens when they they go too far down down the road with that is like um, they can't have a conversation with just an average person. No. Say that they grew up weird or yeah, yeah, yeah. you know it's it's all prestige. It's yeah, all. Yeah. F- if anything fake yeah it's fake it's I, false. I don't like the fakeness and you know what, what made me realize I, to be honest if i didn't get injured the times i did i could have been a different person you know what i mean but mm. that time out injured made me realize bro you're a human you're a human being <laughs> nothing you're nothing special do you know what i mean well the interesting thing as with on this topic now so say like you're mixing with other football through your experience whether it was in England whether it was Cyprus yeah, Italy yeah. whatever yeah. so you've probably seen a lot of people there where they show off arrogant yeah, and yeah. maybe don't want to like talk to a particular person yeah, yeah, and like sure. um, but to be around that and you just stay humble and be you yeah, yeah. don't let other people change you know yeah, yeah. that's what's about you know yeah. being, yourself, being who, yourself who you are for sure yeah you know that's all it's about and as, as I say I, I still got I still speak to everyone in my area Every, every mom and dad that I know from my mates and stuff still say hello, how are you, how's every Because <laughs> I'm nobody. And as I say, even yeah. if I even I play in Cyprus, it's not in special. Yeah. But if I was playing for Liverpool, I wouldn't I wouldn't be different. A hundred percent wouldn't be because I know how how it feels to lose it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I went from being a, a footballer to being injured, and when I was injured, the people that was calling me the footballer. Was putting their heads down when <laughs> when they were seeing me now, because they know I wasn't play, I wasn't active anymore. And when I come back, oh, there he is. You're doing, you know what I mean. So I know the difference and how people switch up and yeah. stuff like that. So I, people are humans. Humans always are gonna make mistakes. So I don't blame anyone. I don't hold grudges. I'm I'm one of the the nicest guys you'll you'll meet. You know what I mean. I don't I don't really care if if you've made a mistake or if you if you wanna blank me or if you wanna. Okay, I've done it before. Yeah, I've done it before. Do you know what I mean? It's it's being a human. You make mistakes. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's that's all I see it as. Yeah, that's it anyway. Don't exactly. Well, I really appreciate you coming on today. Nice one, nice you one. You know, nice what I mean, we've dealt with like your timeline, yeah, also yeah, yeah. the importance of African history. Yeah, and you're, you you know I like to how you're wise. You're wise to everything. Yeah, yeah. You know because there's a lot of propaganda that gets put out there, there about there us. Is, there is. There is. Now, one last question before okay. we go. Yeah. And this is very important. This. Yeah. Racism in football now. Oh, yeah. Racism in anything, but yeah, yeah. Football, football was one that caught me from young, from yeah, watching yeah. John Barnes, sure, yeah. you know, people throwing stuff on the pitches sure. and shouting stuff. How hard was that part, or was your generation, it got better? To be honest, I think I think I was caught in the middle of both sides. So as I was in Sunday League and stuff, there was the 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 narrative of BBQ, uh, BBQ Big Black and Quick, that's what a lot of like people would say, big, black, and quick. That's all he is, big, black, and quick, which would dismiss any finesse, any skill of a black kid. So straight away, there was the stigma of, oh, he's just big, black, and quick. He can't play with the football. He's just big, black, and quick. Put it in behind. Oh, it's gonna okay, run. okay, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's, the, that's the bit I dealt with. And then as I got into, as I got older, I think being black is starting, starting to get more cooler. They started okay, to play. Yeah. They started to play more Afrobeat and changing rooms. They started to think, okay, because there's that black player that's got technique that he can do that. We, re- we respect him now. Do you know what I mean? But uh, back in the day, I just, I just don't understand what was going on. There was a lot of, even now, there's still racism in football. <laughs> just the just the week, people are throwing banana peels on the pitch. Still, you know what I mean, still till this day. You know what though? Um, like the problem with that is as well. Like people, it's like they're allowed to them. Yeah. Because if, if you're serious and like, you know, you make this a serious offence or a serious well, issue. Well, let me ask you a question then. You know. Well, let me ask you a question. You go you go to a, a game 
any team in the Premier League go to a game, what colour is the majority of the stands? White. Yep. So, at this, there's only white people there. They're going to be talking about the black guy because there's a, a bunch of white people there and there's a black guy that's made a mistake. They're going to be talking because that's what happens at home. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. When's the black guy there? Oh, no. I love jollof rice. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's like typing stuff on the internet. Like right now, people get, the footballers get com- comments. They get messages. A lot of explicit things. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's just how the how people are nowadays. They hide behind it, but when to your face, they ah oh, I love jello fries. I love this that. that yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. So it's it's a difficult one to challenge. I don't think you can stop racism, especially in in England. Mm. And the, I think the the to how to end racism is everyone everyone that's got African descent go to the continent where you're from, and we live like the white people live in Europe. Even finished. better, you know what I mean, and we, and we we build, like if we, there was a there was a tweet that went up the other day, mm. if all the African players went back home to play, the Premier League's finished. That's right. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Premier League's finished. Yeah, because the predominant the two best two players this season for me, in the Premier League, Saleh, Salah and Mane, where are they both from? Egypt, Senegal. <laughs> See, you know. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we dominate the league. <laughs> African people dominate the league. So if yeah. we went back and started our own Premier League, they're not making money. See, people need to think of these things, you know, exactly. as, as the future goes on. You know, it's one thing on the continent where I try to remove this corruption. Yeah. But there has to be a connection with people, the African diaspora, yeah. and people in Africa. Yeah, yeah. But if there's a disconnection, a big disconnection. this is what's holding us it's, back. It's, it's and like you said, we just need to get there. All of us yeah. and connect with connect. you from America. What well, what did you like actually in um, Ghana? Yeah. I see a lot of Black Americans going yeah, yeah, to a make a even, new living even there. In, even English. in England as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was like really inspiring because yeah. Ghana looks amazing. Yeah, you yeah. know, I mean, I'd love to go to Nigeria to be able to set up a place and that. Yeah, but yeah. Ghana is a lot more easier. It's easier, yeah, yeah. And, and people I, are more I, hate to, I hate to actually say that. Yeah, same. But so I have do to I. tell the truth. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, so, so do I. So do I. That's what it's about, no, isn't it's it? True, it's true. They, they've got, they've, they've overcome their problems in Ghana, and now yeah. they all work together. Like there's a rapper, Lethal Bizzle. Mm, Lethal yeah. Bizzle, yeah. There's a couple of them. They come, they partnered up together, and they made luxury apartments that you'd see in Dubai, and they've just finished the project like last year. And I'm just thinking, imagine, imagine all the players, all the musicians, or everyone just come together. The richer people from Nigeria come together or oh, the richer people from Sierra Leone come together wow. and, and created projects at home even if it was one building it's going to change the mindset of a lot of people it is it's about changing that mindset because imagine a, a yeah. young kid that's only seen huts or mm. half built houses drives past that apartment and then now now in his head he wants to be an architect you know what I mean yeah that's the difference mm. see it's about um, reconnecting and connecting with the African spirit. Of course, of course. You know what I'm saying? Because if we, if we don't reconnect, we're always going to have this problem. I agree with you. Yeah. And I think a lot of just, not just Europeans, other people around the world can give treatments of African people 100%, 100%. bad. From places, China, India, yeah. all of So it's not yeah. even just, but I believe that if we did all come together and became stronger, yeah. put more things in the positivity, yeah. people would look at us differently. Way differently. And I think a lot of the, non-african non-black people yeah they see the disconnect in in black people yeah and they use it to their advantage do you know what i mean that's right so black and black crime in a, in one neighborhood yeah <laughs> they're just gonna look at that and say i knew it you know what i mean exactly. we're, we're, we're letting ourselves down as much as there is racism out there we're not helping ourselves a lot of the time exactly. by making gangs gun crime knife crime stuff like that it's not helping the image of what we actually are and we're strong black independent people that are trying to make a living for our families to get better a better life do you know what i mean yeah so it's, it's um yeah tough. well, well where, where we're up to now with you there um, what's your plans are you looking to stay cyprus or yeah, do you think so, you could move on to another place or you're happy where you're at um so right now i'm you're only 23 it's, it's still, yeah, yeah yeah i'm still young i'm just um trying to keep on playing um have have a breakout season hopefully I, that's this season um but in terms of contracts and stuff, I'm still speaking about stuff now. Um, probably I'll be going back to Cyprus. 
but in the future I do want to I want to travel more I want to go to I want to try and play in places like Malaysia nice yeah, Thailand yeah, yeah. I, especially because financially right mm. now in the position I am as I say to a lot of my mates look not everyone's Jamie Vardy, that the guy that's gonna make it at twenty six in the Premier League. It's it's not possible. It's the that's the one percent. Like mm. it's not gonna happen every time. So the mentality I have is try and make as much money as I can with my feet before they give in. Do you know what I mean? So if that means me going to play in the other part of the world, Australia, etc., I don't mind. Mm. I just want to do what I love Good. and make an earning from it. So right now I'm just waiting on the next deal. And then we're gonna go from there. I'm not making no plans, and hopefully, if I if the deal comes through that I'm meant to get, I could hopefully get some sort of international call up or even go and train with the national team. You know, so and you'd be ready. I'm ready, of course. That's um, it. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, well, I want to thank you very much, and what you're doing, that pan. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, it's a pleasure to have you on anyway, and um, thank you. You know. It's, that's what it's about, it's about getting guests in from sure. all over the place, sure, yeah. you know, and I uh, want to thank you very much you anyway. Too, you too. Uh, you. This is James DeBow on Discovering Season 5, dedicated to original peoples, and we are here today, and thank you very much. Thank you, bro. Look forward to watching this back. Yeah.